Hello, this is Mo Tinker Gnome. I'm gonna go through the setup of the Speedix 250 racing quad here. As a note, there are no props on the motors. This thing, during what we're gonna do here, they can fire up and uh, we don't want to lose any fingers. Um, so once again, make sure if you're doing this, no props on the motors. All right. Although the, uh, I'm gonna start with the quad here. This is the Speedix Agility 250. Uh, it's carbon fiber with uh, reinforced um, arms here. Got a camera in the front for first person view. The speed controllers are in the arms with the motors mounted to it with blue Loctite. And with the Naze 32 flight controller, the micro USB port is accessible. You probably can't see it here, but through the back. So just taking a, a cable and fishing it in. And notice that it's ridged enough just to plug straight in the back. And this little goofy antenna is for the uh, video transmitter. Basically just got it screwed in there. And the tension of the top plate and the bottom plate is what holds the uh, video transmitter in there. Never power up the video transmitter without an antenna. Um, if you do, it'll fry it. All right, so if you've been following along, got the, uh, the assembly done on the quad, and I'm gonna go through the, uh, the flight controller setup here. So we've got the back end of our USB cable, we've got our computer, radio, batteries, and I can use the, uh, the goggles, but they're there. One thing of note on the radio, um, I had to reverse the aileron and the, uh, the rudder and then later when I fly this thing, because it's a strictly analog signal, I got this little uh, uh, Midland action cam and uh, um, the, the plate and the shock absorbers came with it. And I'll end up mounting that right about here just so I can get better video on the, uh, for the, the flight testing. But if you're going for speed there, this will save you a couple ounces by leaving it off. Alright, so we take our USB cable, plug it into the side of the laptop. I'm um, running Windows 10, so it's uh, not really, there aren't any drivers that need to be done. Um, in Chrome, you're going to need to go and install either base flight or clean flight. So I'm going to go through the base flight configuration now. So with the quadcopter plugged into the USB, got a single blue light and occasional blinking white light. Um, depending on the version of the Naze 32, your LEDs may be different. I've just got the Hobby King version. Most of the Hobby, the stuff here is from Hobby King, except for the, the frame, basically because they were cheap and was going for the, the cheapest racing quad I could build. So anyway, fire up base flight. Um, however, I have flashed this uh, flight controller before, so it's not going to do it. If you were to hit connect without updating the firmware on it, you may receive a message stating that the uh, um, firmware is incompatible. So I'm going to go down to firmware flasher here. I'm going to select the latest stable release. And I am connected to the internet. So I'm going to click on load firmware online. It'll go through, say, loaded online firmware. It'll give you the info from GitHub of what it is, and then we can flash the firmware. It is erasing the existing firmware. You can see the orange status bar going across the top. Once that's finished, it'll go from verifying and programming is successful. All right, this time, even though it's not needed, I like to go ahead and just reboot the flight controller. So we're gonna unplug the USB cable, plug it back in, and we can start the configuration. Going to click on the leave firmware flasher here in the lower left hand corner. And then I've never changed any of this stuff so I'm just gonna hit, make sure auto connect is checked and then hit connect. At this point, you'll notice that the flight controller is working. With it sit on a flat level surface, not the quad that is, um, Click on Calibrate Accelerometer. Accelerometer calibration started. Accelerator. Accelerometer calibration finished. And that is now 
calibrated. Don't have to worry about magnetometers, don't have to worry about barometers. For configuration, making sure that it is in a quad X, because it's a quadcopter X, motor one, two, three, and four. See in there, you got the arrow pointing forward, and that is showing the front of the quadcopter. Um, so we don't have to do anything here. Got minimum throttle, uh, mid throttle, RC input center value, you know. Okay, that's all fine. Don't have to deal anything with that. But we are going to go th down to miscellaneous, and then under loop time in microseconds, the uh, speed controllers are 600 megahertz. I'm going to change the loop time to 1600 microsecond. And then you want to click save in the lower right hand corner. If you notice the PID settings, pretty much just can use the defaults here. You're going to want a value between four and six for the proportional. On roll and pitch, I have those both set to four. And then for yaw, I have that set to 8.5. For the I, 030 and 030 for pitch. And then for yaw, I've got 045. Derivative on yaw, I've just left at zero. I'm just going to try the out of the box configuration. As far as roll rate and pitch rate, I'm using 0 0.40, the, the roll and pitch. And then for yaw, I've got that set to uh, 0 060 with a TPA of 0 0.10. Uh, the reason for the TPA 0 0.10 is that under full throttle, it will reduce the PIDs to try and uh, make sure that it's locked in and the tuning link we'll just try that right off the bat just to see what happens gonna hit save there going to go to the motor testing page under motor test notice moving sliders will cause motors to spin up in order to prevent injury remove all propellers at this point you'll notice that we have nothing here so I'm gonna put the check mark for that and then under master I'm going to set that at full throttle and the reason why I'm doing this is because the uh, the speed controllers, while they say they don't have to be calibrated, it's always best to calibrate the speed controllers. So with this setup, full throttle, I'm going to connect a power pack to the power distribution board. If we go to low throttle, those tones been calibrated. And at this point, you can also check to make sure that your motors are running properly. So we've got the slider for motor one. I'm gonna spin that up a little here. And we know that's running in the right or the correct position, which will be clockwise. And if you're confused, go to configuration. Motor one's clockwise, motor two's counterclockwise, motor three's counterclockwise, and motor four is clockwise. The motors I picked, the silver spinners are reverse threaded from the black so that you can't spin off a, a spinner and propeller in flight. What I did before we got to this point is I used a little piece of paper and some tape, wrapped it around the, the, the spinner here because I don't want any propellers on it. And then went to motor testing and slowly brought each motor online just to see which way they spun. Because if you get a motor that's spinning backward, you need to open up this panel here and switch around any two of the uh, motor wires coming from the speed controller. As you can see, we've got the, the green lights up front and the red lights in the back. Motor 2 will spin up. As you see, motor 2 is the front right. Motor 3. Back left. And then motor 4. Front left. Alrighty, so the motors are all spinning in the correct directions and the speed controllers are calibrated. If you notice, we've got a blinking green light on the back of the receiver. Uh, means the receiver has not been bound to a transmitter. So we'll grab transmitter, press the bind button, and then turn it on. It'll flash green and red and then it'll go solid green and then the back of the receiver will go solid green as you see the radio is now controlling the motors so we're going to go to the receiver tab we're going to check all of the settings 
go ahead and center all sticks. Um, also center all trims. Since this is a, you're going to want to make sure that you've got a front and back roll. So you give it full forward, full backward, roll left, roll right. And you want to make sure that this is going like 1900 to the right, about 1000 to the left. And it stays right around 1500 in the center. If your numbers aren't right, go ahead and just adjust the trims a little bit here. So then make sure that those are all going. Um, throttle, minimum throttle is 1066. Full throttle is 1050 on here. And then for yaw, left, and right. Um, Left will be 1055-ish, and then right about 1800. So anyway, as you can see, this is properly working now. So to arm this flight controller, throttle should be all the way down and then to the right. Um, and then the flight controller should be armed. Um, one other thing to note is that under configuration here I've checked don't spin the motors when armed alright and this thing should be ready to go I'm going to go ahead and mount some props on and then uh, try flying it just to see what happens thanks for watching